Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play a Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and join me as we dive into a world of Pokemon, short for Pocket Monsters, which does that have any bearing on the series at all? I mean, I guess the Pokemon are kept in Pokeballs and shoved in your Poke Pocket. And that's where they live. I guess they are Pocket Monsters. But uh, Pokemon just sounds like some random Japanese name that's been made up. And it's good enough for me. Um, I was never a big Pokemon player back in the day. The most Pokemon I ever played, like, independently outside of this channel was Pokemon Go. When it was, like, all the craze, I played it for, like, a week. Uh, just very lightly. Never really got into it. I had friends who really got into it. I had friends' moms who got really into it. Uh, never really captivated me all that much. I mean, I did play it and caught a handful of Pokemon. It was a cool idea, grant you, but, uh, yeah. The NPCs in that game were really rude. Anyway, hopping into Pokemon Diamond version. Um, Pokemon is one of those games... Oh, I don't have the controller set up. All right, time out. Oh, this is a weird twist of fate. I actually did have the controller set up. That's very weird. Anyway, Pokemon is one of those games where they always would put out like two versions, like red and blue, and you'd have to buy both cards and they have slightly different Pokemon. I think this one in the book is Pokemon Diamond and Gold, so I kind of had my choice. I went Diamond because it sounds more fancy, um, but you could play Gold. They're very similar. It was it, It's such an obvious sort of marketing thing to like put out virtually the same game but have a slight variation, but at the same time, I do kind of think it's neat. Um, and one thing I've always thought would be kind of cool is to have a movie that had different endings and there were like different versions of the movie so people would have to go and try and see the same movie multiple times see different endings i think in reality it would just annoy people no studio would ever risk doing it but i, th I always thought it'd be cool and recently that kind of happened with spider-man across the spider-verse where there were actually slightly different versions in different theaters uh the versions none of the major plot points differed but it was like slightly different audio takes and stuff um, you can go read about it if you're curious, but that's the closest thing I think I've ever heard of a movie having multiple versions. Um, so instead we got Pokemon, which has multiple versions of the game. So, you know, it's what it is. Anyway, um, look, no info needed. I'm going to stumble and fail my way through this game like I do every game. In fact, I'm offended that you even asked if I needed help. Do I look like I don't know how to play video games? Uh... The Pokeball. Oh. I'm supposed to actually tap the Pokeball. So this being a Nintendo DS game, we're gonna have to tap the screen. Times we play together and other times we work together. We work hard and we play hard. Pokemon after dark. Adults only. Triple X. <laughs> Rated R. I don't know where I'm going with this. Okay, are you a boy or a girl? I feel like the girl has more zazz if you look at her. Like, look at that style. Like, she just looks cooler. This guy looks like he probably got beat up a lot. What I mean, God, probably does get beat up a lot at school. Uh, let's go girl. Why not? We'll mix it up. We'll be crazy. Yes. Tell me, what is your name? My name... Uh... How about my name is no not pp <laughs> Jeez. my name is pokey j it's like pokemon i'm glad they have enough letters here you could spell pokemon because i'm sure somebody did that i'm sure somebody out there has a save game file where completely unironically <laughs> their name in pokemon is pokemon uh but i'd be a little offended if you didn't have enough characters to at least spell pokemon anyway Pokey J. Your name is Pokey J. Yes. Okay, so you're Pokey J. A fine name, that is. Now, this boy here, I believe he's your friend. I've never seen this guy in my life. Kick him out. I don't know him. What might his name be? His name could be Barry, Damien, Tyson, Marcus with a K. It's very pretentious. Or a new name. His name is Pokemon. Pokey. I guess I could be clicking the screen for this, but I'm old school. Oh, Pokemoo. 
Okay, Pokemo. I, I was gonna name him Pokemon, turn into Pokemo, accidentally deleted the extra. Oh, now he's Pokemo. Hey, Pokemo. Yeah, that's your name, buddy. You just got named. Imagine showing up for a job and they name you on the spot. And not just like a nickname, like that, it gets burned onto your license after you accept the job. Like, your name is now Terry. Welcome, welcome aboard. Um, okay. You're talking a lot about self-discovery and stuff. Look, I'm just here to catch little monsters and force them into servitude. I'm in it purely for the money and the lols. Despite the exploration team's best efforts, the rare, oddly colored Pokemon eluded detection. All right. That concludes our special report. Search for the red guards. Brought to you by Jubilife TV on Nationwide Net. See you next week. Same time, same channel. All right. My character. My name again, Pokey J. This is a little Pokey J. Press the X button to open the menu. So she's a bag. Of nothing. Oh, she's got some med medicinal medicine. It's empty. Pokeballs. She's absolutely nothing. Not even any berries. <laughs> it's rather pathetic, actually. Hello, mother. Pokey J! Pokemo came calling for you a little while ago. I don't know what it was about, but he said it was an emergency. Given the theme we've started with Pokey J and Pokemo, I like to imagine there's everything in this world is Pokey. Like my mom, my Pokey mom's watching the Pokey TV, getting ready for Pokey dinner, while I'm off for a Pokey venture. Don't go into the tall grass. Wild Pokemon might attack you. It would be okay if you had your own Pokemon, but you don't, so... Yeah. It's like when you when you take your dog for a walk. You know, you always walk it through the junkyard, so it can get in, you know, wild random brawls with the junkyard dogs. But the people who walk through the junkyard just for fun without dogs, they just get mauled horribly, right? So, it's the exact same thing. Get a junkyard dog if you're gonna go for junkyard fights. Randomly. Okay. Oh, was that Pokemo? Totally ignored you, bro. Hiya, Pokey J. Pokemo was looking for you. I think he's home now. Why don't you check it out? Okay, I guess we're supposed to, uh... We're not supposed to randomly ditch out on this dude. Thud. Hello. Pokemo, what was that about? Blah, blah, blah. Come and be quick about it. Finding a... A million monies? Okay, I'd skip through that conversation rather fast. Wait, was that it? What, what just happened? Was that- was it the guy I was supposed to talk to? Excuse me, don't mind me, friend's mom. I'd better take my bag and journal too. Oh, hey, Pokey J, we're going to the lake. I'll be waiting on the road. It's a $10 million fine if you're late. What? What government body enforces those kinds of fines? They seem capricious and arbitrary. So we got a little bit of a 3D-ness going on in the graphics. Very light 3D. Which is reasonable. It's, you know, they're trying to make the game seem more modern and stuff. Um, I like that it's not, like, in your face and, like, overly done. It's sort of very subtle. So I'm, I'm fine with it. Adds a bit of uh, zazz to the the retro style graphics. I've been using that word a lot in the last, I mean, twice in the last five minutes. So I don't know where I got it. I've never said it before in my life. Just this video, it started. A new thing for me. Anyway, um, can we run? This is incredibly slow. Oh, this is, the pace of this is just... I know you're supposed to, like, take in the scenery or something, but I'm like, get to the lake, man. We gotta get those guards. I think they're, like, Gardos or something like that, but it just, it's all in caps, and it's G-Y-Y-R-A-A-A-D-O. It just looks like somebody's, like, screaming a battle cry. 
Um, okay. The professor is hanging out the lake with a young boy at nighttime by himself. No comment. Uh, I think they're talking about hunting Pokemon. Oh, he left his briefcase. Excuse me, let us pass. Hey, that boy looks like the one that I rejected. Guess his name was Lucas. What was that about? Those two. Let's check this out, man. Okay, I'm gonna push this guy into the river. It's my plan. Oh, it's a briefcase. Those people forgot it here. What are we supposed to do with it? Oh no, Pokemons! P -p Pokemon! A couple of eagles swoop down and slash us in our faces. These are Pokeballs. Which one do you want then? Oh, you have a choice. I mean, what's the difference? Oh, I can get monkey, turtle, or bird. I like Monkey the best, but the thing I've learned through playing Pokemon is I always pick the one that looks the dumbest, and it's probably the best. <laughs> I, I don't actually mean that. It's I find with Pokemon, like, they're, you know... I My instinct is to go for, like, the, like, aggressive-looking ones. I guess Monkey looks the most... They're all cute, but the Monkey looks the most humanoid and, like, he could do something. So, it's like, I would totally write off just the random turtle, but I bet you the turtle's pretty good. So I'm going to go against my instincts and pick the turtle. Against my better judgment here. A wild starly came charging. Go, Turtwig! Oh god, that's his name, is it? Can't rename that thing, can we? Fight. I like that it's... Even though I had to tap the uh, Pokeball to start with, I like that it's all controller-based. I really appreciate games don't force you into touchscreen when you don't have to. Like, we could tap the screen, I could come over here and click, but it's letting me use the controller. I like that. I like that. I do appreciate that. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and tackle. Sure, we use tackle. Okay. Wild Starling use Gowl. Uh, Turtwig's attack fell. Okay, so far I attacked it, and I'm the only one who's lost hit points. I guess let's try this thing. Turtwig used Withdraw. What'd that do? Turtwig's Defense Rose. Wild Starling used Tackle. Okay, when I tackled it, I got hurt. When it tackled me, <laughs> it got hurt. So is there no point to... Can you attack things in this game? Like, what the heck? Look, I'm just getting hurt. I think I'm gonna lose this fight. I mean, I'm a level... No, wait, I'm a level five and it's a level two. I'm just gonna continue to withdraw, I guess. Man, the turtle is a terrible choice. This thing sucks. It's the worst Pokemon ever. Its special move is it attacks its enemy and it gets hurt. Oh, no, wait, I'm looking at the health points wrong. <laughs> All right, I'm stupid. For some reason, I thought the health point for Turtwig was the one above it. But no, that's the health point for the Starly. Okay. I am I am hurting it. All right. I mean, that makes a lot more sense than whatever the hell I... I don't know what the hell I thought was going on. Also, I'm just noticing the genders. Turtwig's a boy and Starly's a girl. So, in case you were wondering. They don't want to have any ambiguity about that. I mean, they want people capturing Pokemon without... Inspecting their gender first, I guess. All right, Turtwig. Fwa! Your Turtwig totally rocked. But my Chimchar, oh God, was tougher than yours. There were other people's Pokemon, though. We had to use them. Uh-oh. This guy's going to be pissed. He found the briefcase. The professor would have gone through the roof if he knew I forgot it here. Huh? What? Did you guys use these Pokemon? How am I going to explain this to the professor? Preface is the professor, so I'll take it, okay? All right, we're keeping the Pokemon. What was that about? I don't know what's going on. Let's get out of here. Poke my Pokemon got hurt from the battle. If we get attacked by another Pokemon, we might be in trouble. 
I mean, he got hurt just a tiny amount. You go ahead. I know we have to return these Pokemon. They're not ours, but I just want to spend a little more time with this little guy. It's like stealing somebody's hamster. Kind of want to go level this guy up a little bit. Route 201. Oh, hello, Professor. Hey, it's those people. That old guy staring at us. Hmm. I heard from Lucas that you used our Pokemon. Let me see them, please. Turtwig and Chimchar. Hmm. I see that's how it is. I'm going back to my lab. Uh, yeah, of course, Professor. Wait for me. You should visit our lab later, I think. We'll be seeing you. What was that our craziness about? What craziness? He was just like, see you later. <laughs> Pokey, Pokey Mo's like, man, that was nuts. He like walked up to us. I could tell he was going to talk because his mouth started open. And then he did talk and then he left. Haven't had a night like that in forever. It's crazy. All right, blah, blah, blah. He's hurt. He's quite intimidating. Um... They're all, like, making this big deal of the fact we stole the Poke Pokemon from the professor. Oh, I got running shoes. But it's like, the professor didn't seem to care. But, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess... I guess it was wrong. You know, I feel like we've gone through this before. We've played an, a, another Pokemon or two on this channel. And... I feel like, you know... I mean, Pokemon definitely has a style... Um, and this, this game already, like, even though we're like five minutes in, I can tell it's very reminiscent of the other Pokemon. You know, they're not mess messing with the formula very much. And I feel like, why would they? Like, I, I don't think they should. Um, one thing that I, you know, even though I never played Pokemon, one thing I do kind of like about it is the feel of this like little world that it exists in. I mean, first of all, it's basically an RPG game. But it's a little more unique than that. Rather than having a class and stuff, you have monsters that can level up and each have different abilities. So that's kind of cool. And I also like the idea that it's like not a medieval or even a sci-fi game. Like it's sort of contemporary, but it's like contemporary fantasy almost. In fact, I think that's exactly what it is. Um, I also like that the villages are sort of like rural, you know, like this is like... This village could exist in The Legend of Zelda, you know, but it exists in pretty much contemporary time. So there's a bit of, like, Stardew Valley-ness to it, and, and... Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, I never played Pokemon, but I get the appeal of it. And it is kind of fun, you know? There, there's... I mean, of course it is kind of fun. I mean, it's a very popular game. Go, Turtwig! Alright, I have a good sense of my health bar now. So I'm just gonna go into defense. Come get me, buddy. Turtwig's defense rose. Wild Bidoof. Use tackle. Alright, time for... Time to put the pain on this beaver thing. Tackle. One hit point attack. Meanwhile, we're just tackling this mofo to the ground. Poor beaver dog is just gonna get it. Down you go, man. I don't know why this kid picked a fight with me. He, like, sicked his dog on me. I'm just walking through the woods. I guess the other thing with Pokemon is they evolve and so they get different forms and then they become more powerful, which is kind of cool. It's a cool thing about them. Like, does this kid want to fight? Your Pokemon's health, that is its HP, is getting low. You should go home and get some rest. Noted. Rando kid. Who are you? Hi, I work at Pokemart. You know that a Pokemon's health is measured by hit points? Brackets. HP. If a Pokemon runs out of HP, it faints and can't battle anymore. You should heal it with a potion. Here, let me give you a potion as a free sample. First one's free. Um, thank you, random kid. I don't know if I should trust a potion handed to me by some random kid in the middle of the woods, just standing in a grassy field at night for no reason. It's a little, it's a tiny bit suspicious. 
All right, Turtwig. All right, let's see if it's worth it to just attack. I mean, maybe these things only do like one point of damage to me, period. Let's see. He does. Yeah, they only do one point of damage, so withdraw is totally useless. I like how they start you off at level five. You're not, you don't have to start with like a level one Pokemon. My attack fell. Yeah, that, that tiny little bird growled at me. It was very intimidating. All right, you killed the Starly, Turtwig. Now you can eat it. Get it in now if you're hungry. Turtwig grew to level six. Sweet. Well, the stats went up. It's good. Who's this punk? That ledge is a one-way jump down. Oh, that's handy. So for like, if you're just trying to get back to town. Ah, uh, here we go. We made it to the other town. That was super close. The professor's waiting to see you. Pokemon Research Center. Hey, it's the dude. What the? Oh, it's you, Poke Jay. That old guy, he's not so scary. Blah, blah, blah. See you later. What was that? Your friend seems to be in such a rush. Anyway, let's go in. All right, let's do it. Professor, finally you've come, Poke Jay, was it? Let me see your Pokemon again. Hmm, I see. This Pokemon seems to be rather happy. Alrighty then. I'll give that Turtwig to you as a gift. Now that it's yours, I would like to give would you like to give it a nickname? We'll call it Tea Bags. Tea. <laughs> I like how the, the name of the Pokemon is longer than the name of the human. Like look how long of a nickname we've got here. Good old tea bags. You're happy with that nickname? I surely am. Your friend Poke Pokemo told me what happened at the lake. I heard you battled very well, despite it being your first time. It's a growing bond between you and that Pokemon. That's why I like to entrust you with Turwig. Hey, call him Tea Bags, man. I didn't name him for nothing. Glad you're kind to be Pokemon. If you weren't, I don't even want to think about it. I mean, all I've done is forced him to fight a couple of times. I don't know how nice of a guy I really am. But whatever. My name is Rowan. I study Pokemon. First of all, I want to know exactly what kinds of Pokemon live in the Sinoi region. To do so, it's necessary to collect data in the Pokedex. Okay, the Pokedex, I think, is just like an index of uh, all the Pokemon you've encountered and know about and stuff. So, you know, is what it is. I've got the same kind of Pokedex as you. When you walked up Route 201, um, oh God, is talking and talking and talking and talking and words and information. Getting sleepy here. I'll teach you this stuff later. All right, well done. Go raid this guy's facilities. Anything in the fridge? Refrigerator is filled with tasty sweets. Mmm. Didn't want to take one though, eh? All right, let's uh, head on out of here. And see what else we got going on. Oh, there's so much dialogue in this. I, I think that's like one thing with RPGs, and I feel like especially with Japanese RPGs sometimes is they don't know when enough is enough. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just an impatient Canadian. But it's like, I mean, it is kind of nice in that it like engrosses you a bit and stuff, but like, I don't know, it's too much. Too much for me. I'm old, I don't know how to read. All I know how to do is fight with buttons and a D-pad. Give me a D-pad and some buttons any day. All right, let's just head off this way. I don't even know what the guy was telling me about. Frankly, I don't care. Just here to kill Pokemons. Oh. Oh, good. You know what? It was only 10 seconds, five seconds since I got conversation. I'm glad we got some more. But you didn't, did you? I know that you're eager to see all kinds of Pokemon, but you should make your mom worried. Oh my God. 
At least the game's trying to like teach kids values. Like, go tell your mom if you're gonna go off on some weird adventure with an old man. I'm just hanging out on the beach over here, eh? I mean, like I said, they have these fun little, uh, little environments and stuff. Oh, look at this, a Pokeball. Found an antidote. Guess I shouldn't have gone straight home, eh? It was worth it to go on a random beach. I am kind of curious to, like, explore the, uh, forest and stuff and, like, see the different terrain and stuff. I'm less interested in the people. They're just sort of, like, you know, soulless shells to me. We're gonna walk through the forest in case we uh, get another encounter. Boom, we did it. I mean, since we're going home, we're gonna rest. So we might as well put this Pokemon to work. A wild star leaf. <laughs> Go tea bags! <laughs> yeah, dog. You're the man now, dog. An old Sean Connery movie, if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. There's also a website, WTMD.com. I don't know if that still exists. It was sort of like funny internet memes before that was really a thing. Like it's pre-Twitter, or sorry, X. Uh, <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh, pre-X, pre pre-Facebook. Might even have been pre-Reddit, although I don't know. I know Reddit existed for quite a while before I really started to use it. I only really started to use Reddit when I started a YouTube channel, and I got into it because, you know, it was like a place where you could post links and stuff. Although they really frown on, like, self-promotion on Reddit. You're allowed to do it a little bit. There are kind of, like, ways to get around it a little, but, like, yeah, for the most part, they, they're not, they don't really like it. I remember one time I saw a YouTube video of a guy who showed off how Pac-Man AI works, and I thought it was so cool. And nobody had, sh it was brand new, nobody had shared it. And so I went to the Reddit retro gaming uh, section, and I shared the video, and it got blocked because it's like no self-promotion. And I was like, A, you, it, you know, the rules of the, re the retro gaming subreddit say self-promotion is allowed as long as it's like, you know, less than 10% of all your posts and stuff. And, you know, like, you, you have to just do it, like, like subtly, you know? Like, a little bit here and there is allowed, but... Um, so, first of all, self-promotion is not banned, so it is allowed. And second of all, it wasn't my video, you know? So I literally responded, and I wrote back to the mod. I think it was a new guy or something, and he truthfully didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And I was like, look, dude, A, self-promotion is allowed, and B, I didn't make this video. So it's not self-promotion. Um, and he never admitted that he was wrong, but, oh, he died. I guess I should use that stupid shield. Oh, well, whatever. He bags fainted. Uh, do I just get, I dropped 48 bucks. I was gonna say, does the animal maul me now? <laughs> I blacked out. <laughs> I dropped my money, ran and blacked out. I scurried back home, protecting the exhausted and fainted Pokemon from further harm. That's hilarious. Sounds like you had quite the experience. Maybe you should take a quick rest so you can relax. Yeah, good call. But yeah, anyway, the guy never admitted that he made a mistake or whatever. He's just like, oh, after looking at the video, I've decided that uh, you can post it after all. And that was it. And I was like, whatever. Like, I'm not going to fight with the mods. But at the same time, I was like, learn how to do your job. You know, like, it just honestly, you did it wrong. Um, and, and also admit when you make a mistake, you know, I, I'm the kind of person, like, if I make a mistake personally, I'm like the first one to say, you know what, it was my fault. I'm sorry. Cause like, what does it hurt? You know, like, I don't know. I think some people maybe are afraid to admit that they make mistakes, but like, I don't know. I think in life, you just have to be comfortable with the fact that you're kind of a dummy. And I don't mean that towards you guys, like you guys in particular dummies, I think we're all dummies and we all say and do stupid stuff. I know I do in particular. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's just me. But I mean, that's that's how I think of myself in my head. I'm like, I'm a bit of a dummy. I'm going to say and do dumb stuff. I'm going to get confused. Just own it, you know, um, because the truth is, I think everyone's a little like that anyway. Anyway, yeah, I don't really use Reddit all that much anymore these days. Um... I, I just sort of fell off of it gradually. 
Um, I mean, I, you know, I used to promote the channel and stuff on Reddit here and there. And it was fine. Um, but, you know, obviously, like, you're not supposed to do it a ton. So it's like, um, I'd promote it here and there. And then otherwise, just generally use Reddit. And I got into it quite a bit for a bit. But then at a certain point, it just got... Um, not exhausting, but it's just sort of like I just I just lost interest, you know, and I stopped keeping up. Um, so I only peek onto Reddit very sparingly these days. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, in fact, as I think about it, I didn't even post that Metal Mercs was coming back on Reddit. Like when I did my live stream and stuff, I didn't even make an announcement. Normally, I I would post it when Metal Mercs was Battle Mercs. Previously, when it was more Battletech themed, I'd post on the Battletech subreddit when there was like sort of big news with it, but it just didn't even occur to me. I'd literally forgot. Maybe I should do that the next time we release uh, a Metal Mercs demo, of which there is a new one coming soonish. It'll follow the same process of being uh, available to the patrons for about a week before available to everybody else, but. Um, yeah, it's in the works, guys. In the works. There anyway, we just slaughtered another bird. Go us! That bird won't be hurting anybody anymore. Now, the thing with this is I noticed that now the enemies are level 3. So, the one thing that they do in RPGs is as your characters become more powerful, the enemies can scale. And I have mixed feelings about that, because I'm like, I get that you don't want it to be like a joke. Oh, this is only a level two guy. Maybe they aren't scaling them. Maybe this is a level two th slash three zone. But scaling enemies, I'm not a huge fan of because it's sort of like, well, what's the point of becoming more powerful then? Um, you know, I've been playing lots of Remnant 2 recently, and that one handles it in an interesting way where there are difficulty levels. So there's like sort of Survivor, which is the easiest, and it goes all the way up to Apocalypse, which is really hard. And as you play on the harder difficulties, you get more experience and stuff, but the enemies have a lot more health points and do more damage. So the enemies scale according to difficulty. But if you want, you can just play the whole game. Even when you're super powered up, you can keep playing on um, on Survivor on the easiest mode. And then you just feel like incredibly overpowered, which is usually how I like to do things. <laughs> I like... I like playing games where you do have to level up and become more powerful, but then when you become more powerful, I want to, like, use the fruits of my labor, and I want to feel OP, you know? I, I like that. I like feeling OP in video games. It makes me feel like I'm good at games, whether I am or not. Um, but, you know, I do like a challenge. I, I mean, I recently played uh, and beat uh, Remnant 2 on Apocalypse, which is the hardest difficulty. Um, and I will admit I used a, a, a tanky build to kind of cheese it a little. I saw online there was like this build that had like incredible damage resistance and regeneration and stuff. Basically enemies were like almost unable to kill you. Um, and I made it all the way up to the second last boss virtually with no problems. But the second last boss gave me lots of problems and I had to use uh, an exploit to actually beat him. And then the very last boss was not only really hard, but my computer couldn't handle the frame rate. So it's like I'm playing the boss at like 20 frames per second. So it was like slow and laggy and it was like impossible. And so I thought, eh, you know, I guess I'm just not ready for the apocalypse final boss yet. So I kind of just like put a pin in it and didn't play it for a while. And then one evening I was trying to mess around with different builds, see if any of them made a difference. Um, oh God, I'm supposed to go ask the professor for help now. And uh, my game was open to public and two random people joined me. And uh, one of the guys was really good. And it took us two tries. The first try, we got like 99% there, but I kind of really screwed up and accidentally killed myself. Uh, when I had tons of heal and stuff left, so I sabotaged the team effort. So we did it one more time and I didn't do that. And we actually beat the game. So there you go. <laughs> but I will say, like, if you go back and watch my videos where I was playing Remnant 2, Playing Remnant 2 solo is almost the hardest way of playing that game. It is it is so hard. Playing with a group suddenly takes an impossible boss from impossible to like, eh, like a, a mild challenge. Um, but like I played most of that game 
the first time through totally solo. Uh, I didn't play with anybody. So I feel like on the apocalypse difficulty, if I could have beat the whole game solo, that would have been quite an achievement. Can't quite do the final boss. And the second last boss, again, I kind of used an exploit, but... Um... Oh my god, I gotta go tell my fan... I thought I did that! Oh, you sons of bees. Bunch of a-holes talking out of their b-holes. Alright, I'm gonna skip the grass this time around. Because I don't feel like fighting more birds and small chipmunk based wildlife I just walk over here and totally avoid this yeah you totally can we nice they give you little shortcuts like that if you don't want to bother with like the pathetic fights so like this has become more powerful I imagine it's really a waste of your time to do those little fights it's like the loading animations take longer than the fight um Okay, I didn't go through the dinner cinematic with my mom, I guess. Professor Rowan asked you to do something big. Go for it. Your mom's got your back. I've got something to find useful. And a journal. Okay, why couldn't you have told me this before, mom? Why couldn't why couldn't you have told me this last time I was here? No, I'm just joking. I'll be alright. Enjoy your adventure. When you're exposed to new things and experience new sensations, it makes your mother happy too. All right, mom's interested in Pokemon. Excuse me, is this my little, is my little Pokemo here? Oh, no, he's not Pokemo's mom. Oh, then he must have left already. What to do? Boy shouted about going on an adventure, then he bolted. He's so headstrong and reckless. Not to worry, PokeJ will deliver that to him. All right, we gotta go find Pokemo. My suspicion is he's blacked out in a field somewhere. Having OD'd on Pokemon experience points. And his own Pokemon being beaten to a bloody pulp by a random bird. We'll find this young man, though, and save him from himself. And also from the animals who are physically harming him. As opposed to just undermining his confidence. Alright. More wild animals. A wild Starly. Get him, tea bags. Go, go, mega tea bags. The Power Rangers called arms. Boom. A growl. I could level tea bags up like one or two more levels by doing a little grinding. I wonder if I should. Smasheroo. This thing is just standing and growling at me. I think it has rabies. It's not really attacking, it's more just foaming at the mouth and going nuts. Tackle! Down you go. 16 experience. Okay, so if I kill like two, two more, two and a half more of those guys, a level. What's this guy? You know, I thought this guy was like a rival trainer. I thought he sicked that Pokemon on me, the bird, the first time I passed through the grass, but he's just a hes just a really nice guy. He just happens to hang out in grass on the weekends. Which I think we can all sympathize with. All right, another bird. Going down, bird. Picked a fight with the wrong turtle master. Get him, tea bags. Don't let the name fool you. This turtle is very serious about his craft. He will bite the shit out of you, bird. Do we get to capture a Starly eventually, or are they just like wild? Like, you know, untamable. Untamable Starly. I guess you need to get a Pokeball and like throw it at the Pokemon you want to capture and capture them. If I remember Pokemon Go correctly, that's pretty much how it worked. Here we go. I do like how Pokemon allows you to choose your random encounters. So actually, you know, I never played Pokemon, but the one game I played that was basically a Pokemon ripoff was 
Pocket Morty, I think it was called. It was a mobile game, but I mean, it was essentially the same thing that, you know, you just walk around an overworld, you have Mortys that you train, and they all have like uh, different abilities and stuff like that. Wow, I actually got attacked. The last three birds have just growled at me. About to level up though. Um, but yes, Pocket Mortys. I played it so much that I unlocked all the like special hidden Mortys and leveled them up to max and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I'm a big Rick and Morty fan, and Pocket Morty's was just a... I mean, it was it was Pokemon. I mean, I guess that proves that, like, had I been the right age when Pokemon came out, I probably would have got into it. Because it's like the gameplay of Pocket Morty's drew me in. It's basically Pokemon just reskinned with something that I, uh, I guess, like more. Not that I, like, have anything against Pokemon or whatever, but to me, they're just, like, random, weird Japanese-looking animals, and, like... You know, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't care about them one way or the other. Like, I, I don't think Pokemon are particularly cool. I don't think they're particularly uncool. They're just like a thing, you know. Um, but they kind of remind me of like random monsters and stuff that I used to be into as a kid. Like I was really into something called army ants where they were like little ant figurines, but they were like decked out like commandos and stuff. So there was the blue army ants and the orange army ants. And it's like they had like sunglasses and guns and uh, jackets and they look like G.I. Joe's, but they were like uh, cast out of plastic. So they were solid, but their tails, their like stinger parts could come off and there's like purple, blue, orange. You could take them off interchangeably and plug them into other ones. And it didn't do anything. There was little, little rubber butts that you could pull off and put on, but it was kind of cool. You could like mix them up. Um, I remember Food Fighters was a thing. There was like food that was monsters, so, like an evil hamburger and stuff. Or Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I mean, Ninja Turtles, obviously. Boglins, they were just like puppets. They were like rubbery puppets that looked like gremlins or something. Um, yeah, anything like just monster or like random mutants and that kind of stuff, I was all into as a kid. Do not tell me that I can't go yet, punk. You know how to catch Pokemon. I'll demonstrate. Get out of my way. Can I cram Lucas into a Pokeball? The professor will never know what happened to him. Wild Beedoof appears. Go Piplup. All right. Piplup. Do your thing, man. Oh, God. You know, if the fights weren't slow enough when we did it, now we have to watch somebody else fight. I will say the one thing I find with Pokemon is the fights are too slow. Like, I'm literally just pressing the A button, trying to speed things up as much as I can, because <laughs> it's so slow. I know this is a bit of the tutorial, but even when we're actually playing, I'm trying to get those fights to go as fast as possible. And I know they don't want to let you just like, boop, 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 click through the menu, but it's like, could you speed it up a little? There's a lot of delay in like waiting, you know? Like, the Bidoof was caught. Why is it taking, like, 10 seconds before we can go on? Right? Like, it's just it's just pointless delays. I'd say if I have, like, one criticism about this game, it's that it, there's too much delay and it's too slow. Although, actually, I will also say there's it's possible that this is being run slightly slower than it actually runs on a DS. I'm using an emulator so I can record it. But it's possible the game's running a little slow. Actually, if it is, I... I Feel free to let me know in the comments. Maybe it runs a bit better if you, you know, are playing it on your actual DS. I know, um, I've noticed a few visual artifacts when we're walking around at night where, like, there's, like, loose black pixels and stuff. I don't know, again, if that's intentional or it's a glitch. But anyway. All right, tea bags. Let's do this. He's a level two, eh? We're not even going to bother to, uh... We're going to bother to use our shell... And have a shell of a time without a shell. Down you go, Bidoof. I guess I was supposed to capture him. Do I have any loose Pokeballs? I don't even know, actually. I didn't. The guy showed me how to capture Pokemon. I was kind of like, thanks, bye. <laughs> didn't even really pay attention. Oh, this is new. A Shinx. Go, go, tea bag. 
All right, teabag. Tackle him. All right, let's see if we can capture that guy. Only just two points of damage. Pokeballs. Oh, man. Device for catching is thrown like a ball target is designed to capture them. Let's do it, man. Let's capture a Shinx. <laughs> it was one second it was fighting, the next it was like transported into a pocket dimension, Doctor Who style, into a tiny ball. I like to imagine it's in a little universe just falling endlessly, like a universe devoid of anything. Just falls for like 24 hours until I decide to free him. All of its fur dazzles. If danger is sensed, it flees. Or if danger is sensed, it flees while the foe is momentarily blinded. Okay, we caught it. Give a nickname to the Shinx. Nah. I'm not going to bother naming most of these guys. Unless I really, really am like kind of into it. I happen to be a Pokemon trainer. Our eyes met, so battle we must. Let's dance, Bozo. Look at this kid. Challenged by youngster Tristan. Tristan sent out a Starly. I mean, I've beaten several of these. Oh, a level five. I'm going to say I've beaten many of these to death already today. But... I mean, I am a level eight. Let's just go into our shell. No. There we go. Defense up. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta use an item to heal. I think I'm I think I'm dead though. Because he's gonna quick attack me again. Bag. Let's use it. On tea bags. Oh, there we go. All right, 20 hit points, man. What you got? Aha! You suck. Be prepared to be eaten. And it actually does hit a lot harder than the ones I'm used to fighting. It's been like four rounds and I haven't attacked once. It was like shell shell heal. And round four, I finally attacked. This thing got in four free attacks. I just want... I want everyone to, to know that this thing got four free attacks on me. I still beat it. Down you go, you little punk. I wish I could po- Oh, I should have pokeballed that. that. That'd actually be hilarious if someone went to fight you and like, Aha! Then you're like, psych! And you just like took his Pokemon and ran away. Like, not only does he lose, but uh... Lost his Pokemon. And we stole his money, too. Don't be shy about talking to trainers you'd like to battle. Pokemon grow stronger from battling. Shut up, punk. Oh, another combat. Fly with my little eye, a trainer. A battle, please. People are dicks. Challenged by Natalie. Send Bidoof. Bidoof just sounds like a goofy dumb name. A level three! T-Bags are gonna tear you apart like a Kleenex at a snot party. Tackle! I'm not even gonna bother to shield up. Tackle two. One point of damage. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, Bidoof. You simpleton fool. Oh, three damage. Oh, be doof. How about this? Just gnaw your face off. <laughs> Sorry, that's graphic. <laughs> Game brings out my, like, extreme aggression. I think I got a lot more experience from fighting that, like, trained Pokemon versus a wild one. And I learned Absorb. Um, oh, she has two Pokemon, eh? Ooh, might as well keep training up this dude. I wonder what Absorb does. 
Well, I mean, I, it's right in the name. I suppose it absorbs damage. But I guess I wonder how much, you know? And for how many turns. Kind of stuff that'd be helpful to have an instruction manual. Or, frankly, one of the many dialogue boxes that we had to sit through, the long conversations, could have been literal helpful information about my unit statistics and stuff. I would have taken that. I can't win. Give me your money. Then get lost. Dare challenge me. Oh, there's another trainer. What if we can avoid him? Nope. I feel like I'm being bullied. I mean, this is just how Pokemon goes, but I feel like there's just a bunch of bullies standing around waiting to attack me. He sent in Shinx. Level five. Go, go, tea bags. All right, tea bags. Go in hard. It's going to take two more attacks. Leer. Right, my defense fell. Well, lucky for me. All I need is one more attack. As long as he doesn't one shot me here. Nah, four damage. I guess the turtle's pretty tough. So, I mean, I guess I like having a, a Pokemon that's sturdy. So, I guess the turtle is actually a good pick. Here's a question, is uh, Pikachu in this? Had to think about that for a while. You're like, wow, PokeJ got 80 bucks. Um, is Pikachu in this franchise? I know Pikachu is like the iconic Pokemon, but like, I feel like I recognize him the most from Pokemon, yet he's also the uh, Pokemon that I feel like they never want to like actually um, give you. Or at least not from the get-go. It's like playing Super Mario Brothers and they like hide Mario later in the game because they're like, I mean, he's the most iconic of the brothers. You know, you don't, you, you can't just play with him from the get-go. I guess the idea is if you could just have Pikachu as a starter Pokemon, who would pick anything else? It would always just be Pikachu as a first pick. And so there'd be, you know, like less room for these other Pokemon to shine. I like these weak wild ones. I guess I should capture a Starly eventually, but I'm kind of farming them for experience right now. Like, I kind of want to kill one more. Found a potion. Oh, that's good. I might actually have to heal my guy. What was. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, what's this guy saying? But I got sucked into a battle with a Beedorf. Or Beedoof. Be Dwarf sounds like it's what his name actually should be. I never want to use the defensive options because, like, I don't want to skip a turn of attacking. Because, like, let's say that I used my shield right there. He still would have attacked, and now I would have to do two more attacks. And so he'd get two more attacks on me. Whereas this, I just... Or one more attack, I don't know. This time, I just... I took one hit and I killed him. This seems like a slightly better way to go. I guess in prolonged battles, if I know that it's going to take like, uh, you know, um, several rounds before I kill the enemy, then defense is good because it will probably last for uh, quite a while. Some Pokemon only appear in the morning, some at night. I mean, Pokemon did tap into this whole thing of like collecting and completionists and like it's very smart to have like a thousand of these different little Pokemon that you guys got to capture. Um, I might be more of a challenge raising a lot of Pokemon, but it's worth it. In Jubilife City, there's the trainer's school. Check it out, PokeJ. I went to the trainer's school early. Work hard on your Pokedex. All right. Old little village to explore. I do love these, like, little villages. It reminds me of Earthbound and, uh, like, the Super Nintendo Town or whatever, BCX Town that was used for, like, the Nintendo Live Service in Japan. Um, Mario Golf. Oh, I, 
still go back to that sometimes and think about it. The thing that really blew me away about Mario Golf was not only was it, oh, I, I'm getting kicked out. Not only was it uh, like a really solid golf game, but it had this whole like little village to explore and people to talk to. And I don't know, I just like that. Reminds me also of Habbo Hotel. Do you guys remember Habbo Hotel? That was a thing. You know what, there is a, there's a chat service. Oh, I remember this from the pandemic. It looks like this and you walk around. It's a video chat service like Zoom, but when you walk near a person, then you can see their camera and they can see yours, but you can't see everyone, right? So it's like if you walk over and there's like another group of people here, you can stand next to them and you can talk to them. And if you only want to talk to one person, you can come over here and have like a private conversation. I remember that. That's actually such a cool idea. I forget the name of it. I'm sure it's still around, but I mean, like, the thing that sucked about trying to have big Zoom parties is, like, everyone is in a giant conversation. You can't have any one-offs and sides. This feature allowed you to do that. So I feel like that was such a... It's such a cool idea. And I only ever used it once. A friend had, like, a gathering, and they invited people for, like, a couple hours uh, to, like, talk and stuff. It was actually for, like, a baby shower, uh, to be honest. But, uh... It was during the pandemic, obviously, as well. Um, but yeah, it was very cool. Fuck, what's the name of that? Totally can't remember. Uh, Route 218. All right, well, I say we just battle a little bit more here, but I mean, you know, Pokemon is one of those things that like, it's like a hamburger. You know, you always know what you're going to get. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, Pokemon is Pokemon, right? And, uh... You know, it's going to have some of the same basic flavors, no matter where you're getting it from. But uh, this one just seems like, you know, more of what people who love Pokemon are going to want. Um, it has, you know, slightly, I like the slight, very subtle 3D graphics. It still feels very retro-y in its images and, and, and sprites and stuff. But it has like a tiny hint of modernity. And I feel like that allows you to have sort of very retro style graphics but still have it feel a little more modern and new so i appreciate that um in fact while this random girl tries to mug me i'm getting out my book and we're gonna have a look and see what the book says about pokemon diamond here and the battles are so slow that i can look this up while we're battling and i'm probably not gonna lose very much i guess the one benefit of this is you can read while you play pokemon Go tea bags. All right, fight. I think I'm actually going to use absorb because that's a level seven. And so let's give it a shot. Oh, I think maybe I healed myself. Oh, you can drain its energy and heal you. Well, that opens up all new worlds of possibilities. Uh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Oh, it's my turn just keep absorbing i was trying to actually heal um in town but uh couldn't find it that's energy drained it's gonna drain your energy man that's my whole strategy here i'm, I'm i'll straight up tell you what i'm gonna do to you b dwarf it's gonna drain you it's gonna suck you dry that sounds terrible i mean it in the vampiric sense you pervs Get off of Pervert's Island and join the rest of us over here, man. Can't say anything without you guys immediately going to innuendo. There are many permutations of monsters in the Pokemon universe. With additions coming into play as the series has progressed, but the game sinks its hooks into players through its interlocking simplicity that is the cornerstone of the series. Electricity types... Electricity types, Pokemon with electric attacks, such as Pikachu, are super effective against water types, but not very effective against... Oh, right, they all have types. It's like rock, paper, scissors. There's, like, different elementals and stuff. Um, man, this Absorb is really healing me up. From these basics grew a business empire. There's a rather amusing style sheet occasionally handed to writers that specifies, among other things, that Pokemon are not creatures. They are Pokemon. Okay. And a menagerie... And a menagerie that, by the time Diamond slash Pearl iterations boasted more than 500... Pokemon in 13 different types. Um, I mean, they're just talking... The book just talks generally about the Pokemon series. It's not really saying anything specific to this game, so... 
I find the book does this sometimes. It's like they pick a game and then they just sing the, sa the praises of the franchise without really explaining why that game was selected. But I mean, I guess it was just like one of the newest ones at the time of writing the book. And, um, you know, with Pokemon, it's one of those things of like every single one is sort of a hit. It, you're hard pressed to find a Pokemon game where like, oh, Pokemon one is good, but two sucks. Three, they were sort of floundering before it came back to form, you know, like, it's not where like, you know, some are good and some aren't good. It's like just literally usually all of them are enjoyable. Um, okay, he said his dad gave him Pokemon. Two Pokemon, youngster Tyler is Magikarps. Oh my God, it's a fish. Go, go tea bags. Tea bags will fight them all. Tea bags cares not that you have a fish. I only have seven more attacks. I guess when my attacks finally wear out, it's time for tea bags and me to retire for the day. But this fish looks terrified, man. I think he's just terrified that he's gonna drown. I mean, the fish equivalent of drown, which is suffocate, right? It's the ultimate irony that if we go in the water, we suffocate, and if the fish comes on the land, it does. This Two, two different kinds that were never meant to mingle in this world. Fish and man. Give me your life essence, magic carbs. You're gonna have to go back to your dad and explain why his Pokemon are dead. It's gonna be very awkward for you, Tyler. Anyone experience points? Come on, Tyler. I'm gonna leave the tea bags in. He sent out Stolly. I just want to level my guy up one more time, just for the just for the rush of, you know, being more powerful. Let's do it. Stolly used Growl. And my attack fell. Did it fall enough that I won't one shot you here? Oh, we actually got a hit in. Good for you. I'll just absorb it away next time. Ooh. Oh, it did. It saved you. All right. Let's absorb your life energy. So I guess Starlies are good for like getting that first hit in. Give me your energies, your energons. Not very effective, but he's still dead. Starly fainted. 60 experience points. Oh, we leveled up. Yeah, boy. All right, I'm feeling very powerful. But they're Pokemon I got for my dad. Give me your money. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, I think this is as far as we're going to go in Pokemon uh, gold, silver, and blue or whatever. That diamonds are forever. I thought it was diamond and gold, but I think I had that written down wrong. I think it's the uh, diamonds and pearls, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did you guys play this one back in the day? Uh, and to those Pokemon aficionados who know the series way more than me, um, like what, what about Pokemon changed as the series went on? So that's a good question. Like, I mean, I get the appeal. I get why people like it. I get why it's addicting. I totally see it. And yeah, as I was saying, I got into Pocket Mortys. So if I had been the right age for this, I probably would have got into it. But since I wasn't, and I sort of missed the Pokemon train, like my eyes look at this and I feel like, yeah, we've pretty much played a variant of this. You know, like it didn't have slightly 3D graphics. It was just all sprites. But even the original like Game Boy Color ones and even the Game Boy version of Pokemon oops, was very similar. Oh, we made it to a cave. Check it out. So um, it's not like it's of a different kind than something I've seen before. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, some of these games, you know, the differences and stuff um, are subtle as you go on. You have to actually play them more than 45 minutes to an hour, which is what we tend to do. So if you do have to play this game for more than an hour uh, to appreciate what is different about it than its previous entries, 
I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear you you guys sort of swoon over Pokemon in the comments. So let me know. What do you guys like about Pokemon? What change has the series went on? Are the later games like this one better than the original? What do you guys think? Um, debate in the comments and I will referee and we'll go from there. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you guys did enjoy the adventures of Teabags. He has run out of energy and I think that means he's not long for this world. Um... And okay, I think we're in a lot of trouble here. You know what? Let's have let's have a little fun here. Let's throw Sphinx in the mix. The bags is watched out, switched out. Get in there, Shinx. Oh, this thing is dying instantly. Nine hit points. Oh, it missed. Get in there, tackle the Zubat. Nope, it leashed my life before I could do anything. Oh, but it didn't do that much damage. All right, come on. Can you beat a level five? Hmm. I'm skeptical, to say the least. Just sucking my life force out. Yeah, it's not possible. Well, I mean, I could heal and stuff, but that's okay. Guys, it has been fun. I hope you enjoyed today's just little look at Pokemon Diamond here. If you did, don't forget to like the video and all that stuff. If you did Go ahead and dislike the video and refuse to share it. It's your prerogative as a YouTube viewer. You are the connoisseur that tastes what I offer in sample and comments back to me about what whether you liked it or not. I don't know what I'm saying, guys. I hope you did have fun. Uh, don't forget to come back soon, I guess, one way or the other. And until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. Good luck with all the random little monsters you accumulate in your pockets. And otherwise, peace.